So welcome to Millennia. Now today we are going on a run of absolute chaos. Just trying to dominate every single person we come across. Now this playstyle definitely does have some pretty big downsides. Which as we progress through all the different eras you will see and we will painfully try and survive. But I gotta say, this is sponsored by Paradox Interactive. So if you do want to pick up Millennia for yourself, the link for that will be in the description. Now starting out today, this is a completely random start with a completely random choice of people in the game. So all I know is that I am the United Kingdom. We have Edinburgh. There's some wheat, there's some grapes, sheep, olives and cotton. So this is a nice little start. And we do have a river, which I believe will give adjacency bonuses for like farms and stuff. So, you know what? This is not looking like too bad of a start. We start off with two wall bands. And what I'm going to do straight away is jump into our research. Now, each age are the start anyway. You have to unlock at least three of these technologies and then you can push to the next age. Now, the first two ages are basically set. So we have the age of stone and the age of bronze. But after that, there's a couple of different choices with certain requirements you have to meet to get into them. But starting out, we are going to go with scouting. This does give us a free scout and our scouts are able to move through jungle and deep forest terrain. So that is very helpful. And what we're going to do is go into Edinburgh and we are going to straight away build our first scout cavalry because scouts are very important. One thing I really want to do is early on really need to try and find three landmarks. And if we find three, we can unlock a special age. But it's not always guaranteed you're going to find them. So but we'll see. Now, the needs of our people is they need two food. We are currently making four. So our population will grow very fast at the start. Just four turns until we get our second population. Now, later on at like 6 and 11 and 16 population, I believe it is. They need different needs and stuff. So we'll deal with that when it happens. But early on, I say, let's just get wandering. You know, explore around us. See what's around. There we go. And we now have our second population. So if we go into the workers tab, we can actually assign them to certain things. Now, I think I will keep them both on the grassland for the most food. It would be nice to get a little bit more production so we can increase our units and our buildings. But I would rather just get more population for now anyway. So we're just going to hold on like that for now. Oh, and we have our first culture power ready now. Hmm. It's not really much to use them on. I guess create a town and we could do it but here like that. And now we put the town by there. It should expand pretty quickly and get these two tiles. Now these towns at level one, they don't do too much. They have like adjacency bonuses and stuff. Once they get to level two, they can be specialized. So that will be very helpful a bit later on. But my plan, I want to turn Edinburgh into like a mega city, make it really big. And then maybe have one other city and the rest of them just have loads of vassals. Because later on when we can become a feudal kingdom, vassals can be so profitable. There we go. Finally, our first scout. Look how much further they move. I'm actually going to go ahead and build a second scout cavalry, to be honest. And our current government is tribal. Now, later on, this can be changed. But you use your government points on these. So we could get plus one food in our homeland or raise a tribal army. You know what? I'm going to take that plus one food just to carry on growing these guys as fast as we can. Oh, and there's another little city here and there's one here as well. So if we go on them, we get pop up. So we have the artifact. The village is built around a large stone monolith. Its etchings and carvings tell complex stories in an unknown language. It is very significant to the village people. So we can gain knowledge or culture. Knowledge, definitely. And that's finished our scouting research. So we can move on now. Tribal elders does give us the council, which does give us more knowledge. So I'm going to pick that up because I want to be first into the new eras. Because whoever's first get to choose what era is decided and then everybody has to follow in the same era. So being first for that is nice. And we, of course, have our scout cavalry now. So we currently have two and one more is being built. Another little city here so we can get exploration or warfare XP. We'll take the warfare XP. Oh, another one as well. This is one of the benefits of scouting early on. You can find these like little villages. And if you get first to explore them, you get nice bonuses as well. So it's nice to rush and they're hostile. So maybe later on, once we have a bit more of an army, we can take these over and make these a vassal. So that'll be very useful. Ooh, and there's a landmark. So what we need to do, 
We need to get a scout up there straight away because only scouts can discover landmarks. So we have a deep forest. And we have our first battle. Our guys up here being attacked by barbarians. So you can see the little pop-up. You can open it and see like all the numbers. But um, I feel like we should win. So we're going to skip to the end. Yeah, perfect. And I, it's really good to get a lot of battles in early on because then your guys get more experienced. Oh, and another landmark there. What is the landmark? Water. I don't know. <laughs> we get our scout over here then really quick. One over there. And this guy, you move up and discover this one. That's two out of three already. This is the quickest I've actually found two. <laughs> so move them right next to it. And then on the next turn, he should be able to get that one. And we can discover this one. It's the Great Barrier Reef. So we get some exploration XP and combat XP. That's not the important part there. There we go. And as you've just seen there... Edinburgh just expanded. If we click uh, this button here, we can see 0.27 each turn and it's filling up to that number. And once it reaches that number, it expands around these borders. So as you can see, it grows much faster around a village. But there's a lot we can do to speed this up, which is going to be very important because, like I said, I want Edinburgh to be an absolute mega village. Or city, you know, at that point. Another little town we can spawn an archer. You know what? Yes, please. I will take that archer and we can join it up with these units. So that'll be a decent little army. Maybe we take these over pretty soon, you know? You know what? I'm going to bring these down and I say we try and take these on pretty soon. And we can discover this one as well. The mysterious jungle. So let's just hope we can find two more. And here we go. We have finished tribal elders. So we can now build the council building for more knowledge. Now next, we could either go defenses or farming. I'm going to go with farming because at the bottom left, we have this little improvement tab where you can build a bunch of stuff. Oh, a hunting camp's not bad. It would give us some meat. Or instead, once we get farming, we could put a farm on this wheat. And I believe that would get us more. Oh, no, that's rice. We also have grapes. Yeah, I think we put a farm maybe on some of this uh, wheat or barley and that. And that should give us a little bit more food, I believe. There we go. And that extra scout cavalry was built. So we now have three scouts running around. And this turn, you know what? I'm going to build the dolmen. That does give us three more influence. Right now we have five. And influence is what's basically used to automatically expand your borders. So I think that would be pretty good. So we're going to do that. Oh, and look at that. Oh, the United States, you have met another nation. So that is these guys up here, I'd have to imagine, at the top. But look at that, expanding even more now around that. So this place is looking pretty good. And we can go ahead and put a farm down on this rice. And if we check our workers tab now, we have the farm, which works one wheat, which then creates three food. It says rice, so maybe I built the wrong thing on there, which uh, is not too much of a problem, to be honest. We now have... 167% of our needs met. So they should expand quite fast. There we go. And another town. We can get more improvement points or knowledge. I'm going to take the knowledge. And we have finished farming. And this turn, you know what? You know what? I'm going to pick up defenses and then I'll go into the Age of Bronze. That could cause somebody else to get in the Age of Bronze first. But that's okay. Now we have another cultural power. I don't need to create another town, to be honest. We could use a Eureka, which would give us five knowledge, which is two and a half turns at our current rate. But raising an army with two more warbands, I think we'll do that. And we're going to try and vassalize this town over here. So we have this one army here with two warbands and one set of archers. I say we just send them in there. And it thinks we'll have a 100% chance of drawing. Um... I still think that's our best bet, though. We have another government perk available. I'm going to pick that plus one knowledge so we can start speeding through this. I say we just go for it. You know what? It's going to be tough. And I mean, they could have us, really. Let's see. What's the damage? Yeah, I think that went a lot better for them. So maybe we have to hold off until we have slightly better troops for that one, to be honest. Ooh, another landmark. That's going to be our third one. So as long as we're first in technology... We can advance to a nice age. So let's hope we are. I believe it's the one after this one. Government XP, Warfare XP. Um, neither are great right now, to be honest. I, I guess I'll take Government XP just to advance our government in here. And there we go. That, I believe, was Egypt now advancing our age. So we are shooting to the age 
of bronze. And in the age of bronze, we have new national spirits unlocked. Vassals integrate two times faster. Barbarian warlords may appear. Innovation and chaos events appear. And trade and diplomatic envoys are available. All of those things, very, very important. But it is one more turn until we enter ourselves. Right, we need to make sure this scout here survives and gets away from all these battles. Oh my god, America's there. Oh, if they move there next turn, they're going to discover it before me. Please. Please, no. <laughs> yes, they didn't go there. Okay, huge. And there we go. We have officially entered the Age of Bronze. So, let's see what we can do. We have a new button here. And we get to choose our National Spirits. So, this is like an extra bonus. So, there's a lot of options. From exploration to warfare, engineering, and diplomacy. All of them are very good. It, of course, it just depends on what sort of game you want to have. And like I said at the start, we are going full chaos. And let me just say, raiders are full chaos. Just look at this. Spawn to raider band. Spawn to raider band. Spawn to raider band. And again, and again, and again, and again. Yeah. And you see this one be here, outlaws? They are free. So we could spawn all of these and it won't cost us a single bit of gold. Yes. Please. So we're going to pick up that one first of all, so they're free. And we can pick up this one as well. And if we look now, we have four units of Raider Bands, which have 14 attack, 14 defense. They're not the best units ever. But if we look at our War Bands, they're 7 and 10. So they're noticeably better than those. But we're going to go in for attack now on this Barbarian Camp. And hopefully this time we should finish it. No, their walls are still standing. Of course they are. Another attack. Come on, it's just walls. You can win. Huge. There we go. So after that, we can gain some Warfare XP or Engineering. Ooh, Engineering would be nice. But I'm going to go with Warfare because what we can do with that is more Raider Bands. So uh, we now have six Raider Bands. And I think that means we are ready to get the Vassal of Bursa. Look at that. Little roads being made as well, making it travel way faster between them. So I appreciate that. And what we'll maybe do is get some archers in these armies and we should take them over and get our first vassal. And now the dolmen's been built as well. We should start expanding a little bit faster. So next, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go with the council building for that plus one knowledge. Please scout, survive the attack. Whatever you do, just survive. Huge. You know what? And we will let you heal yourself. And we're going to get you right up here and hopefully discover that one. And as long as we discover that and we break in to the Age of Heroes, as you can see, we need three landmarks discovered. If we fail that, I'll probably, you know what, I may just go for the Age of Blood because we are going for Chaos. Like If we don't meet any of these criteria, we go into the Age of Iron. But the Age of Blood is like a crisis age, I believe. And you can only get it if you're the first one to advance and you have killed at least six units from other nations. And the Age of Blood for basically causes every single nation in the entire world to go to war with each other. It is, like, insane. And, of course, you'll miss out on any of the technologies from these two ages. You'll get the Age of Blood ones instead. So each game can actually be so different. So I have really enjoyed that. Now, next, I am going to unlock mining could be good, discipline, community, or belief. Hmm. Um, we don't need discipline right now. It does increase the maximum army size. That's something we definitely want. So we can have four units per army. But, hmm. Okay, I'm going to go with officials for that diplomacy XP. Because as long as I'm right, which I think I am, with diplomacy XP, we can spawn traders or merchants. And we can send those merchants to our vassals and increase their prosperity, which will give us more money. But I'll explain that a bit later on. Right, and there we go. We can discover our first landmark. So... If we look now into the research tab, as you can see, landmarks discovered three of three. So we could go to the Age of Heroes, maybe. We'll, we'll see. That's why I like to play these games. Let's just see what happens, you know? Just, just go with it. See what happens. Anything can happen. So just have fun. And we have met Germany. Okay. And if we look at the power, I imagine we're the weakest. Oh, I'm actually more powerful than the United States so far. And Germany. Okay, yeah, we are more powerful, but we do have those raiders. Well, I'll take it. Now, let's get an archer unit with both of these. And now they should have a little bit more success, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. So the first attack, two of our raiders got broken, but they're not dead. So we'll let them heal. And we could spawn raiders for 
20 martial, but I think instead we're going to save them for these. So they can do more attack versus militia and stuff like that. And they have movement bonuses. So I think I'd rather spend it on them. So we're going for our second attack. And they don't have walls now. So uh, a little bit better. But again, not perfect. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to send this third army in. This is no archer. So it might not go as well. But honestly, the walls are gone. So archers are not going to be as important. Please finish the job. Yeah? Is that over? I think that is over. There we go. Prisoners of war. Their defenses were valiant, but they could not endure. After the last of them surrender, you must decide what to do with the survivors. So we could just destroy it. We do gain some chaos, but instead, let's vassalize them. And we now have these guys as a vassal. Now, why you want to avoid chaos is once it like reaches the maximum amount, you have like a terrible event, right? And it, they're, they're awful. On the other hand, you have innovation, which works the same way, but you have a really good vent where like you could like your units could do more damage or like farms could be more productive or just stuff like that. So they're way better. But with our first vassal, what we want to hopefully do at some point is once we get a merchant, send them here. Because if we look right now, they have one population, which can go up to five. But once we're a feudal kingdom later on, they can increase their population more than five as well. Then they have this integration bar, which once it's maxed out, you can like integrate them as a proper city. And then you have prosperity. So as you can see, total income right now is 0 0.23. Kind of bad. But once they have 300 prosperity, they contribute more gold and stuff to you. So as long as they have chance now to build up over time, we should start making good money from our vassals. Now, I'm not seeing any other little cities near us, which is kind of sad. There's two up here, but... There's like nothing around us, <laughs> uh, which, you know, is not ideal. I was hoping for a little bit more than that. We could go up and take uh, this city, which I'm not pronouncing, and Stockholm as two more vassals. And then maybe put like an outpost here to get some roads and stuff. That's not... Yeah, I think I'll do that. And we could unlock more stuff for our raiders. More movement or raise value. I'm not going to raise, to be honest, much. So we'll, we'll take the movement. And we've met the Aztec Empire somewhere. Um, where? I do not know. Just there somewhere, okay? That, that's all we know. They exist. One thing we can do is absorb outposts, which we will do pretty soon, I think. Once we're able to get an outpost built, we can just absorb it into our capital, which is very nice. But I think for now, let's just Eureka. We will unlock officials. So we can start getting markets down and stuff to try and get a little bit of diplomacy XP for that merchant. But next, we are going to go with mining as that spawns a pioneer. And the pioneer is what actually builds the outposts for you. So very important. And um, it did spawn us an envoy. We can just set them over here and set them to integrate faster. Although it's not too important for now, but we may as well do it. Well, they finally built the council, so we are gaining a nice bit more knowledge per term, but we are struggling. This city's not growing very fast, but the more people you have, the faster you can make it grow. So, we have some improvement points. They're doing, like, completely okay for food. They could do with a little bit more, to be honest. I think we should build... We can build stuff for protection, but I'm not too worried about it being taken over, to be honest. I think maybe food stockpile. For the extra bit of food, and it gives us plus one region level, which is very important later on anyway. And for improvement points, hmm, plantation, and we could get our grapes, as well as some more food. Hunting camps could be useful, but, uh, pasture. I think forester would be nice. You know what? I'm going to build a forester. Foresters create logs, which gives us plus to production. If we have a look, you can see we are making wheat and logs. Now, later on, which is something that really confused me when I first started playing, but now I kind of understand it. I really enjoy is like now we're making logs with the foresters. Later on, we could use a sawmill and we take them into planks or whatever, which make even more production. So you have like these production chains all relying on each other going on at the same time, which if you can manage it can do really great things. And as you can see, food stockpile is just going to take five turns now with that extra two production from the logs. So very nice. The United States want an alliance. You know what? I'll take it for now. They're kind of close to us. So maybe later on we can remove that alliance and then go and fight them. But for now, it kind of gives us a little bit of a safety net. 
So I'll take it. But I'm very, very not happy about how little there's like little cities around us for us to take over. I was hoping for a lot more. There you go. And we finished our research on mining. So we need one more and then we can push us into the Age of Iron. I don't think we're going to kill six other nations in time or units from there. So one more. Community, belief, discipline or shipbuilding. Um... We'll go with discipline so we can increase the size of our armies mainly. And there we go. We now have tribalism reformed, which gives us plus 10 innovation and plus 2 culture. And as you can see, the government is now ready for a peaceful revolution. So a bit later on, when new governments are available, we can peacefully just change without problem. There we go. And we have our first pioneer. So what land do we want to absorb into our capital? Fisheries are very, very nice. Each one will give you like plus five food, which is huge. Although we could maybe put it up here. We get more wheat. Uh, we get some gain. Hmm. Or if we put it... Th uh, we can't put it there because there's a tile there. It'd be a waste to put it there because we get less land. Although we would absorb like all of that. Hmm. Or if we placed it in this tile here, we'd get a bunch of forests for production. We'd get the cotton. We'd get some fish. You know what? Yeah, I, th I think I'll do that. So next turn, you can go ahead and do that. And then soon we should be able to absorb that, which is very nice. There we go. And we can unlock pillage now. So that means our raiders are going to do plus 1.2 times more damage like versus militia. They have more attack stats, which is very nice as we're going to start taking over some of these. There we go. And what we can do now is we can construct an outpost. So you see these like this blue outline. That's the outpost. So we're getting some fish, we're getting some cotton, and we're getting a nice little forest tile as well. So later on, once we have this new culture in three turns, we can absorb it into Edinburgh. Huge. Right, I mean, now it's time we take over our next vassal, hopefully. Hopefully, let's just not lose too much. Ooh, that was a bit rough, although they have no walls left. So send our second army into attack. Hopefully without walls, they fall a bit easier. As long as no one dies, I'll take it. Uh, you know what, let's just send our last army in. If we can take them over this turn, that's really big for us. That means they don't have a chance to rebuild their walls or anything like that. Yes, there we go. Our second vassal. And actually, we did kill two more units of other nations. So we're up to three out of six on the Blood Age Crisis. Ah, <laughs> uh, wait. Yeah, okay, Stockholm is still free. So we're going to get all our units now to just start healing. And it should be a little bit quicker as we are in our own territory as well. And then after that, we're going to see if we can get Stockholm as well. It would be useful to maybe get like another one here, like an outpost or something. So then roads connect, which will make it really quick to walk in between because right now it's very slow. Although what we're, oh, well, you know what we could do? We could spawn a settler and maybe settle a second city around here. Well, there's not really much here. Maybe it'd be here and we get like a little fishing one with like sheep. Hmm. So if we get another outpost, say, here, it expands, gets a lot of these fisheries. And then we put an outpost here. That could work. So I might actually spawn a settler next. That could be big for us. Now, we did finish that food stockpile. So next up, I think government XP, diplom diplomacy XP. I'm going to take that diplomacy XP so then we can start maybe getting some merchants. And our research has been complete. So our armies now have... Up to a size of four. We've got chariots, spears, reinforcement, which is... This is my favorite ability. You can use combat XP to restore your army's health. And you get combat XP by fighting. So, <laughs> just, just think about it. It's very, very powerful. And if we look... Oh, we could start going to the Age of Heroes. You know what? Might as well just start pushing to the Age of Heroes then. We're first. So, we can get the Age of Heroes as we do have those... Those three landmarks discovered. So you know what? Let's do it. And we're going to absorb outpost this turn as well. Oh, we can't support another town. So we need a little bit more region level first. Okay, that's a shame. But that, that that's okay. We, we'll, we'll get it another time once we allow two towns in here. Shouldn't take too much longer anyway. Guess we'll just hit a Eureka. Because right now, Brazil are trying to go to the Age of Iron. So we want to make sure we beat them. So a Eureka is not a bad shout. There we go. So we have our three armies here. Uh, we could actually, what we could do is get two archers in this army here and send them in. And um, we could send an extra raider there. So we have this one backup unit on its own. And these two units now, four per army, because of course we just got that upgrade. And we can upgrade to spear. So we can upgrade our warbands to spearmen now. Which is probably a, not a bad idea if we go around and do that to everyone. 
They're now way more capable than before at 11 and 16. So pretty good. I'm just hoping we beat... Oh, wait, are we first? Yeah, we're first, but Greece are at 74%. Everybody right now, look, is like at the same stage of us. We need to beat them, but I don't know. What if they take over us? Is there anything we can do to guarantee victory? Don't think there is, which is a shame. Let's just hope they don't catch up. <laughs> right, let's go for it. Not bad. We almost took them over then in one. So hopefully this war should be enough. Two archers, two raiders, and there we go. We now own Stockholm as a vassal as well. And damn, Greece has overtaken us. They're taking us to the Age of Iron. And there's like nothing we can do. But that's kind of sad. Oh, well. <laughs> what can you do about it? You know, that's the way this game goes. I might actually remove this outpost, to be honest. We're going to convert it to a pioneer. I'm going to put an outpost like over here just to maybe get some roads trying to get up here to make it a lot quicker to travel between our stuff. But we can get a settler actually in just seven more government XP. So maybe we'll wait for that. And our capital is now idle after building the meeting hall. Hmm. So we might need some walls. A town center for government XP. I think we'll go with that next actually. And then maybe we'll start looking at defenses. Wait, it was us. Wait, we did it? I thought Greece overtook us. I don't know what happened to them, but we are now in the Age of Heroes. A hero unit spawns in your homeland. Send heroes to explore new quest landmarks for unique rewards and veterancy levels. Gain veterancy levels on your heroes to complete more difficult quests. Complete four quests to unlock the legendary Parthion building. New government unlocked. So here we go, the Age of Heroes. So you can get more heroes by promoting your scouts. You know what? Can we promote our scouts now? Promote to hero. And promote to hero. So we have two heroes. And I believe it said it spawned one. Yeah, we've got a hero here as well. So we can send them on quests. So there's like quests up here, like these battleground. There's teachings, Valhalla, prophecy, sun god's altar. So you know what? Let's start getting on these quests. Although we are going to send one hero maybe to just scout over here. But the other two, maybe we'll just send them questing for a bit. Right, and in the Age of Heroes, there's, of course, other stuff to get. So we have smelting, horses, construction, storytelling, glory, oracle, and spirituality. Smelting's nice. Get furnaces and stuff. And I'm thinking about once we get enough uh, government XP for the settler, I am thinking about maybe building a settlement around here. A lot of grass tiles for farms. There's forests. There's coal, marble, cotton, wheat, sheep, you know? That's not bad. And we can maybe put the outpost up here to make sure it links roads all the way. That's not a bad idea. I think I might do that, to be honest. But do we want that first? So Glory can help with sanitation, which is one of those needs that we're going to need. Ooh, but Glory also gets a building with plus six influence. A Vun as well for to convert flour to food. So we get more food for our flour. Ooh, a lodge, 15 housing. And increases the number of towns a region can support. You know what? I'm going to go for glory first. So then we could increase our number of towns this place can support. And we could absorb that outpost still. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I changed my mind again. Surprise, surprise. Oh, and we have our first innovation. So we had enough innovation points then to trigger our first innovation. So we could take 450 wealth. Or we can unlock the bow raider. Hmm. Um... Bow Raider sounds nice, but I think I will take the gold, rush our culture, and with our culture point, what we can do now is a peaceful revolution. That's what this little icon here means. We can do a revolution. So we can go for a kingdom or an imperial dynasty. There are two options for our government type here. So with a kingdom, kingdoms are built on the back of vassals. They expand their kingdom with cheaper settlers, envoys, and spears. And can generate resources off the back of their vassals at a cost of their prosperity. So, generates wealth from vassals based on its prosperity. Reduces the vassal's prosperity, though. Generates knowledge from vassals. Hmm. I've never played the kingdom before. I'm not going to lie. I always pick the imperial dynasty because you get the palace. And with a palace, you're, you can get plus one region level. More food, housing, sanitation. And one thing, two things that are really nice is plus one production... For every two population and plus one knowledge for every five population. Which are both very powerful. But maybe today, do we pick this? Yeah, you know what? I've never done a, uh, a kingdom before. So we unlock Seat of Power. Which is a building which gives more government and diplomacy. 
increases domain XP to a maximum 200 and increase the improvement points to a maximum of 200. Or we can get settlers cheaper, envoys cheaper, and spawns two spear units out of vassal. But these ones are nice. Generates wealth from vassals. So, you know what? We already have two vassals, and we are scouting out to try and find more. So that's not a bad shout. And there we go. Our hero can go on a first mission. Nakula and Sadeva debate between their superior looks and wisdom. So we can get art, combat, XP, or knowledge in combat. Um, art, sorry, not that important to me. <laughs> In this new age as well, we did unlock crossbowmen, so we can improve all our archers to crossbowmen as well, which is very nice. I'll take it. As you can see, crossbowmen, spears, chariots. So we've got all that stuff now, which, yeah, they take a long time to build, though our city isn't there yet. Only six population, about to go to seven. It's not perfect. But as you can see, we have a new need, which is housing. Now, if we look at this age again, glory, I believe we had um, lodge. Which gives 15 housing. So I'm going to wait for that. Rather than wasting tiles building these dwellings. We can just straight up build a lodge for way more housing. Dwellings give 5. Lodges give 15. So we'll just wait on that. And you know, oh, we could use some of this stuff now. But I think I'm just going to spawn a settler over here. And what we're going to do. We're going to get this settler. I think to settle around here. Or maybe there. This tile right there. Then that will give us a road there. Hopefully they make a road eventually. And then we'll chuck like an outpost temporarily. Be here. To increase the speed we can travel around stuff. There we go. So our town center is built. We can upgrade now to the seat of power. Which was our new building. I think I'm going to do that straight away. For the government and diplomacy XP. And then I think we'll actually build the walls and look out and stuff for a bit more defenses. I've been saying that for a while though. I always leave it until like last. <laughs> I just hope for the best. There we go, and another quest. If we had storytelling, we can get plus five influence. That would be huge. So warfare or government XP, I guess government XP, to be honest. There we go, we can found a new vassal city. Like, of course, it does start as a vassal. We're going to get our envoy over here to start integrating it faster. But these guys over here, we're going to integrate pretty quickly, probably. Maybe? I mean, them being a vassal is not terrible, I guess. Uh, we could just spawn more settlers. That's to go away 10 turns. And we could just like settle vassals anywhere we want. Although I think this might not be a bad actual city once it grows a little bit. Once you get these mines and all these uh, uh, river tiles, the grass tiles. So I, I think there'll be a new city eventually. Well, we have loads of people working the grassland. So we need more food. And grassland's okay, but it's not the most efficient. So I think, hmm, maybe we do get a farm. And let's chuck like a nice little farm down over here. Get people working that. That should uh, make us grow a little bit faster. And we could get another plantation. But I don't know if it's worth it to be honest. Now with the glory we also get a bathhouse. Which is eight sanitation. We could build the midden. Which gives us four. But I'd rather just do the building one to be honest. So I think we'll do that instead. We could. Um, I don't know what to get you know. Another farm? You know what? Two farms isn't bad. And now we have a decent chunk of people working on farms. So we should grow a lot faster because we need to get this population up a lot faster now. And we're going to pick up this. So we generate wealth from vast. Oh, you know what? We could generate knowledge instead. Now, our vassal cities, they're not very big yet. Like one, one, one. And this one over here has two population. So right now, our knowledge is 4.3. So what does it go up to now? Then again, later, it should be even more efficient. Uh, 4.3, did it, uh, I, guess, I guess it's not doing much yet because, uh, <laughs> they're not very big, which is a shame. And we've completed four quests, so we've gained 20 exploration XP, and your regions can now build the Parthelion. I'm butchering that, but we'll go with it. Arts or basically engineering XP, we'll take engineering XP, so we can do public improvement for improvement points, spawn more pioneers, expand towns, which is very good, and rebuild any ruined towns. So I want to see this building then. 20 turns and it gives us one culture and bonus knowledge per completed quest. Oh, that's really good. But 20 turns is a lot when there's a lot more we could be building to improve our city, to be honest. So maybe we'll build that a little bit later. There we go. So this turn, we should be able to absorb this outpost because we finished that research. And just like that. We now have Ipswich as well. Once we have some engineering XP as well, we can expand the towns to level two. So we're going to do that hopefully soonish. 
But we have all these extra tiles now, and I want to get another forester down for that production so we can start building things up quite a bit faster because our production's not great just yet. But as long as we keep building, I I'll get there eventually, I think. And after glory, I think maybe we should go for... I think we're going to go with smelting. A lot of stuff here for production. So I, I think that'll be useful, especially in this little town over here, once that's built up a little bit more. And, I got me, and we finished the seat of power now, gainers, government, and diplomacy XP. I do need to start focusing on diplomacy XP, so I am going to get the market next, I think. Although I could get the work camp. You know what? I'm going to get the work camp first for that extra production, and then I think I'll get the market because... We do need more Diplomacy XP really fast. But I think the production will help us even more. So another quest. Diplomacy XP, yes. And I believe we can now spawn a merchant. I'll, I'll start them over here, I think. It's been our one the longest. And they can now deploy Prosperity. So right now it's 100. And after a certain amount of turns, it will go up to 300. So they start generating more income and giving us more income, basically. As you can see, USA is growing very fast. Their main city has 11 population. Uh, not, not great for us. When we're only at 7. We are falling behind. And the United States, after I said that, you know, I was just bigging them up. This alliance was a mistake. All right, well, bye then. There we go. And right now we can finish the Raider line. We can still get that later. But we just picked up Victors. So they gained 20 health after a victory. And um, we also got Legacy, which is with the social fabric stuff, which is in the age after this one so we don't need to worry about that just yet we'll see that when it happens and as you can see the prosperity over here already up to 130 which is huge now edinburgh is desperate for some housing as you can see they do not have enough housing but we now have the ability to make a lodge so next turn we can do that which gives us 15 housing so instead of wasting an entire tile on dwellings for just five we can do it on that instead which is very nice we got the work camp has been completed. So we're going to get the market now as well. And the United States have also now cancelled open borders. Thanks, guys. I, I think they're going to attack me. Uh, I think that's what I'm seeing. We're going to get the wealth. Mm, you know what? Instead, I'm going to spawn another settler. And I think I might make a city, a vassal city here in the woods. Think of all the wood tiles they can get. There's nothing really special here, but it's just a vassal anyway. So, you know what? It's mainly for, like, roads and stuff. So, I, I think that's okay. Maybe, yeah, about here I think will be good. You know what? We'll chuck them down right by there. Then, yeah, hopefully a bit later once we've all grown. Road will go to Bristol. And then Bristol to Belfast, hopefully. But we'll, we'll see. But I think, yeah, once this is able to be integrated, I might actually integrate Belfast. We could create towns in them. Which I guess would, like, help them grow faster and stuff. So, you know what? Is that what we want to use our culture on, though? We could get a Eureka. We did just finish smelting. And next, though, I think we'll go for... I think we'll go for... Might go for storytelling for the bonuses to knowledge, to be honest. You know what? We'll create a town and see... I've never really created a town in my vassals. I want to see if maybe it does help them grow a little bit better. So they pay us more money in the end anyway. And there we go. Bristol is down as well. We've had an innovation. Pay homage. So... United Kingdom flourishes, so we can get farming towns plus four wealth. You know what, we'll take that because that is for the level two towns, which we, are, we don't have the ability to do just yet, but I always use the farming towns. Oh, we do. Level two. So farming town, no change to food here though. I guess this one could be a lumber town, which is more production because it's in the forests. And then this town over here, Rye, that could... Oh, it's only a level one town. Once this is leveled up, we could change this to a farming town, which will be nice and helpful. And we are able to build that lodge now as well. So we're going to do that. And they have 200% housing and almost 200% uh, food. So they should start growing nice and fast now. And United States are giving us warnings. They're, they're, only, like, they're basically the same power as us. So maybe we could deal with them, to be honest. But I think they are going to be coming to war with us soon. So we'll start moving some units near their borders and stuff around Houston. Maybe we can uh, take Houston and Pittsburgh off them if they do declare war. And we could spawn like raiders and stuff and claim more territory which is nice so maybe i'll do that as well uh what do we want though maybe we start claiming some stuff for belfast because that's probably going to be our second town so that's probably a good idea and we're going to upgrade to a granary i think oh yeah you know what yeah we'll do a granary first for the extra food we need it to start growing population much faster it's not going as fast as i wanted and there we go. The United States have declared hostilities so we can do combat in neutral zones so it's not a full war but if we see them like here, we could fight them. 
You know what? Do we... Uh, right, spawn raiders. And we're going to spawn more in Stockholm. I say... Maybe we... Oh, do we just declare war? We're not, we don't have the best, like... We, we, I don't know if we're powerful enough. Hmm. Hmm. Do we just go for it? Can conscript immortals appear as well? That's two spearmen. Yeah, you know what? We're going for it. So we have one army here with two raiders, two spearmen. And we have one with one spearman, three raiders. We're going to get these a bit closer. And I think next turn we just declare war and go for them. We're going to bring some units to Bristol as well. See if any come down this way. Belfast is nice and held. I might move these ones from Belfast up to hold Stockholm though. Or maybe just go and siege Houston. To be honest. Yeah, you know what? That's not a bad shout. Well, I guess we're going for our first war then. Right, there we go. Declare war. So we're going to get all our units now surrounding this little city and hope we can actually take Houston. Hopefully without too much damage. Okay, they're both broken, but they're still alive. That's all that matters. As long as they live, I don't care. They can be healed. That's no problem. I think we'll take Houston, yeah? There we go. So that's another vassal. Next up. Wait, is Pittsburgh like an actual city? I thought it was just a vassal. Their vassals have high population. They have been growing them nice and well. We have one up to three. But that's about it. We need merchants. So we can spawn a merchant. Um, next, I think I'll grow... I'll grow Belfast. So we'll get a merchant in here. Increasing the prosperity there as well. Should we take Pittsburgh? Can we take it? I, mean, I feel like we probably could. You know what? Let's just go for it. We're going to go for Pittsburgh. We'll keep some units back just for a little bit of a defense. Just in case. Problem is, if we siege and our armies get wiped out, we're in a really, really, really bad spot. You know what? I'm going to send this extra army up as well. Why not? I'm just going to use this hero to scout. I can't get 10 XP on him, so he's useless. I'm just going to get him to scout out and see if there's any armies coming our way, basically. <laughs> so if you die, I'm sorry. Right, and next turn, we can start some attacks on Pittsburgh. Seattle, I don't think we're taking, to be honest. It's probably way better defended. We could maybe take this up here, but it'll probably just get lost again because it's so far away. So if we can get Pittsburgh as well, though, we'll have loads of vassals on this side of the map, which is really, really good. And we can get this now, Outriders. That will spawn us another two raiders again. So we have a nice little army holding back with some crossbowmen and raiders. And the rest of these guys just on the full assault. Let's go. It's got way better defenses than the last ones. So it's... Ah, uh, see... They've broken them already, and we didn't do too much damage to them. We got the walls, though. Let's see. Okay, we still haven't had anyone die. We can get another unit to attack. I think we might win this turn. Yep, and we didn't even lose anyone. So regional capital conquered. Three population killed. 70 wealth, 75, and 20 chaos gained. So we have Pittsburgh now. Maybe we integrate Pittsburgh instead of Belfast, because it's quite highly leveled. It's got four population. It's got another town, which we can specialize to, say... I mean, Lumber's given us more of a bonus. So, like, a Lumber town, maybe. And that's another little place here. Now, they are at 450 power. I wouldn't mind peace at this point. We don't need to keep fighting them. We could take this up here. But if we move too much units up here, I'm scared they're going to come through and take all what we just took. But we're going to give our units a little bit of time to heal anyway. Maybe move some back to like Houston and stuff. And they want peace. You know what? We will take that. That was actually great for us. That got us two new vassals and Pittsburgh is very powerful. Uh, we can integrate Belfast now. So you know what? I'm going to do it. So we have another actual city now in Belfast. So we can do some improvements here. Like let's get a farm down so they grow. And let's get a forester down for some production over here as well. And first of all, let's build a... We'll go with a work camp, try and get the production as high as we can, and then we can just spam out all the other buildings, right? And I think we're going to get the merchant to go up to Pittsburgh and increase its prosperity, because it will give me a lot more. It's already given us 1.5 gold per month. Oh, and look at this place down here, right? With 270 prosperity, it's given us 3 gold a month almost. Very nice. And of course, it gives you knowledge and other stuff like that as well. Because of all the evil things we've been doing, we have our first chaos event. So the heroes of the United Kingdom invite challenge from otherworldly forces. So spawn two only. Well, they're just units. Um, or we could pay 450 gold. You know what? Let's spawn them. Oh my god, it's like these? Wait, it said two. This is like bloody 30. What? Okay, uh, there's not... Uh, they're actually demons. What is going on? They're powerful. Oh... Uh, we're actually in trouble. <laughs> um, 
They do... Oh my god, they melt. What we can do is send reinforcements to them. So then if they're attacked, uh, hopefully they can survive. But this is no joke. These are actually powerful. And it did say two. But there's a lot more than two. As long as we can fight them all off, though, I think it's worth it. It's given our units some experience, and it saved us the gold. My like, crossbows melted them. That's good. How about spearmen? Okay, none of them died. We'll take it. We'll take it. That's all that matters. Oh, we can expand town. So I'm going to expand the town in our capital. And let's see. We can set that to a farm in town, giving us more food and wealth. There we go. Problem with our capital is there's not, like, any, like, places to mine or anything, which isn't great. Could get another forester. Why not? We do need some good production. Production's always great, so not a bad shout there. God, they're everywhere. They're hiding in the trees. They're just appearing. There's so many of them. And we finished storytelling as well. So, I mean, we can start advancing to the Age of Kings. Going first doesn't really matter. Construction could be nice. Get better walls. You know what? Let's just start going to the Age of Kings. Although, uh, Greece is already 40% of the way there. I'm going to create a town for Belfast as well. I'm going to create it here. And it should speed up the uh, absorbing these two tiles here then as well. So that's the extra mining stuff. And it's created a road. So we now have a road from Pittsburgh, which goes to Houston. And then it's connected to this city as well, which also connects to Bristol. But sadly, there's no road between these two places. Hopefully they do that at some point. That would be nice. Yeah, these things, are, are, are they people? I don't know what they are. Are they demons? They might just be demons. Oh my god, there's so many. And then it's attacking all my towns and everything. <laughs> They'd be paying 450 gold, but was the smart choice. And the United States declaring hostilities again. Okay. So city militia do a quite a good job against them. But they're just attacking us everywhere. Like, every single town is being attacked over here. Although we do seem to be winning them all, so that's okay. So yeah, they're pretty much on their way out now, which is nice. And there we go. Our vassal over here is up to the maximum. Is it the maximum? It was the maximum. Unless I'm a kingdom now, it's not maximum of five anymore. I believe it is maximum. And then later on, we can increase that. Yeah, we'll start making some good vassals now. They're all starting to grow up their populations and stuff. Now, our capital is free. We still haven't built the walls or look out. <laughs> so as long as we don't get attacked, that, that is fine, though. At 11 population, I believe we need sanitation. So I'm going to start working on the bathhouse now. So as soon as we need sanitation, the need is already met and will continue growing very fast. Seattle's at 15, though. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and there we go. So somebody else has taken us to the next age. We wasn't as fast this time. And it was Greece taking us to the Age of Kings. Building a castle by specializing an outpost during the Age of Kings provides a culture bonus. Generate culture per religious population by founding or joining a religion. Found or join a religion with the found religion culture power. And new national spirits unlocked. Uh, do we need... I don't know if we need to do a religion, but we're, not, we're, we're still eight turns away anyway, so we'll see. <laughs> so over in Belfast, what I want to do is I want to get a mine down on the coal like that. And now Belfast is producing one coal, which is two production. And then later on, once we have our next expansion, we can take this marble and then we can build another mine or quarry on the marble and then build a stone cutters for loads more production. Belfast, they need food. Uh, they are kind of starving. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll be nice and we'll give them a nice little farm. Maybe that'll cheer them up a bit. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. Our bathhouse just finished this turn, which is just in time for the need of sanitation to come by. So we got that just in time. So we're still going to grow at basically maximum speed, which is great because uh, we need to catch up with Seattle. <laughs> we could just spawn a lot of raiders. I mean, that would increase our army size, but we might as well hold on it for now, I guess. You know what? We're coming along nicely. It's now 220 AD. You know what? We're doing okay. What's our power level compared to... Ooh, Germany's a lot more powerful than us. And we're a lot more powerful than the United States. So do we just spawn a bunch of raiders and just go for Seattle? If we can take Seattle, we'll be good. It does have war. It only has palace. Yeah, you know what? I think we just go for it. Right. Let's just start getting all our units to start moving up. We want, we, I think we just go for Seattle, to be honest with you. Taking them out and gaining all this region to ourselves, I think we'll be big, of course. It could backfire, and if it backfires, then you know what? At least we tried. And we're going to use our warfare to just spawn raiders. So we got two armies now of raiders extra, because pretty soon they're going to be useless anyway. They, they, they don't stay really good for long. We also have more chaos happening. 
I don't know why we're getting so much chaos, but next turn we're going to have a chaos event. It's just one of those things. Uh, Aztec Empire want open borders. We didn't get the chaos event yet, but in a turn or two we will have it. But we'll take that open borders. Try and maybe be friendly with a kingdom or two, you know, for now. These spearmen, ah, you know what? Go and have some fun. This army has our crossbow, so I would like them to get up there, to be honest. Belfast, again, could do with more food, but um, there's nowhere to really build any more farms, so they have to just kind of deal with it for now until we got the granary built, which will give us 15 more food, so they'll be set then. Well, I think we're ready to declare war. All our raiders here, everything else is pretty much getting close. So what we're going to do is declare war, and then we can start lining up all our people outside their capital. We're probably going to lose some men, to be completely honest. I'm not going to raid these little towns because I believe once we actually take it, the towns will be still be there like this one up here. So we'll just make it more useful to have. And you know what? We may as well just start attacking. Like, expect some people on my side to die. But I think we have enough men to do this. Look at that. Ooh, okay. Mm, do we have enough men? Um, I don't know, actually. This could, this could backfire. They have chariots and everything. Right, we got their walls. No one died that time, so we can reinforce some of our people. Uh, we can't do it in enemy territory. I do forget that. We've got more units moving up. Uh, for some reason, an envoy's with them. It's probably not what we want in battle, is it? Come on. As long as they don't, like, get units near my capital somehow, we should be good. Warfare, reinforce, any, like, inj... There's a battle going on here. So they've attacked some of our units. Damn. So this is this army right here. Um, if we can, I'm just going to avoid them and just focus on getting their capital. Come on, we, we just need the walls. Oh, the walls are gone. Cool. Oh, um, oh, have we made a mistake? Have we made a mistake? We may have made a mistake. I do not think we're getting Seattle. Hmm. Oh, we're in trouble. Uh, they have very good units in Seattle. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, um, we're just going to spawn more units up here. And just get as much stuff over here as we can. But this is looking really bad, to be completely honest. I'm scared to just keep attacking the capital when it's going so badly. Could maybe swing around and attack these units here and hopefully win. Stop them entering their capital. Okay, I feel like we won it, but they're still able to move. And this unit here is just one set of raiders. We're probably going to retreat them and heal them. But winning this could be a game changer. But losing it could also be a game changer if we lose. Oh, we're in a bad spot. We would have wasted so much of our army. You know what? We still got more units coming up. It's, it's, it's not over yet. Maybe we can make an alliance with... Oh, they just went to war though. I wasn't saying the Aztecs. Let's just propose an alliance anyway. I'm going to actually build the walls and look out in my capital now just because uh, we may get attacked if we lose like too many men up here. Right, chaos event. So lose a lot of food from wheat flour for five turns. I'll take it. I don't want to lose all my gold right now. Uh, and we've entered the age of kings. So we can, now we can mess around with religion. We've got new buildings. But we do also have a new national spirit. So we can leave behind the raiders one as we have finished it anyway. And pick something else. Now what do we pick? I don't know. I'm not too bothered about messing around with religion today. I would like to maybe stick in warfare. So we could go with Khans and we get horse archers. You know what? I'm sold. Horse archers are the best in CK3. Let's see what they're like in Millennia. Where are these horse archers? Are they in our capital? Yeah, that's uh, a while away, but they could be useful for this. We're getting attacked out here. These guys are going to get wiped out. Yeah. Do we retreat? We may have to retreat at some point. We are not getting through that. Oh, I don't want to retreat, but I, I don't think we're winning. I'm trying to take out some of the armies that are just around. Nice. Maybe just back up from their capital a little bit. Focus on taking out their other armies. And then maybe once they're just left with their armies in their capital, they may come out and attack or something. Like we have more units, so I don't mind going into a battle and drawing. Now in the Age of Kings, we do have uh, machines, universities, guilds, dry compass, professional armies, organized religion, and feudalism. So a lot of different bonuses here. I may go with universities for that knowledge. Professional armies, we do get new units. And we increase our army size once again to five. Machines is good. Uh, you know what? We're going to go for machines for that production. I think in this game, production is king. Oh, come on. We just need to defeat America. And then we're so set. If we can take out this army, that's big for us. But uh, we're kind of struggling to catch up with them. We could maybe try and take this city and just weaken them. Yeah, I'm going to do it. 
I was going to try and keep it there. But if we can take over the city and just weaken them, I think that's our smartest choice. We can raise some stuff as well for wealth. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Might as well get some free wealth while we're here. Just start raising everything. Oh, um, I did not pay attention to that. Our capital is close to uh, a revolt. It's having a lot of unrest because of our war. Easiest way to deal with that is just get some city guards down and leave them on your capital. They have eight unrest suppression each. So about two of those and uh, things should be okay over here. So we have one city guard here, which let's have a look. The unrest is now going up by three. So then we get another one for another eight suppression and it should be okay. Right, this town is almost destroyed. After this battle, it should be. There we go. So Seattle is even weaker now. And it gives us more spaces to hold our men so we can still like uh, give them reinforcements and heal them. But do we have enough to take over Seattle? I, I, I don't know if we do. Like Seattle's just going to be a problem. Could maybe send some units up and take this one. But I really want Seattle, to be honest. But we just don't have the stuff for it. I mean, we could instead maybe build some catapults once we unlock construction, which could be nice. Could get some knights now as well, but uh, I don't know. All right, this stack here is our best bet at just doing the initial damage. So we, I think now we just line all our units up and we just kind of go for it. <laughs> you know, what, what else is there to do at this point? Uh, we need to get through to Seattle, so... Uh, this is what we got to do. Edinburgh has two city guards. And there we go. Unrest is going down. I'm going to make a third and leave it there so it goes down even faster. Because unrest, surprise, surprise, not great. Right, let's send our best army in first. Please, I beg. Oh my god. Uh, some of them are taking damage though. If we... Uh, right, send one in attack, one more attack in. Uh, uh, we're not winning. We're not winning. Oh, God. This was a mistake. Uh, do you want peace, maybe? I mean... Because eh. <laughs> uh, we are not getting through that. Uh, I have just discovered that. No chance. Great. They rejected it. Yeah. Um, uh, we're in trouble. <laughs> uh, we could maybe just send some units up for an attack and take this. Maybe that will convince them. I think that's probably what I'll do, to be honest. We'll see how that goes. And we can upgrade now to a keep as well. So we're going to do that in our capital. I'm probably going to get a plantation down on this cotton up here as well. We can do that. Get that worked as well. Uh, they still have a lot of food, so we can... That's okay. We don't need any more food up there. That's good. Edinburgh's doing okay as well. Uh, is there anything, anything of these we want? Poets can... It generates wealth and it turns paper to poems for art. Um, maybe... Hmm. Not really much we need right now. We just need more population and they're all maxed out. So maybe we should save it. Yeah, I say we try and take this off America up here, to be honest. And then maybe try and get peace and they'll only have Seattle. That could work. But yeah, we um Germany just declared hostilities. Right, I think we might be in trouble here. Right, first attack. Oh my god, why are we uh, uh, why are we doing so bad? We are doing awfully. Our attacks are just doing nothing. We need better units. Oh, God. Maybe this attack on America is a massive mistake. I mean, it's definitely seeming that way, isn't it? Come on, we're just going to wear them down. Come on. Please, just take this off them, please. That was much better. Well, we'll send our other army in. They're much weaker now. So they got to get through, right? We've still got to defeat, defeat the tower. Because, you know, you can't just take over an empty tower. Got to send this unit. Oh, they can't. We have to wait one more turn. We have... um. A cultural power. Uh, we could go cutting edge. It does give us more innovation. You know what? We'll do that and try and get some innovation events. We also have loads of improvement points, but I don't really know what to spend them on right now. Hmm. Get more fishing boats in our capital just for an extra boost of food. Could get a plantation down on the grapes as well. I think we might as well. Could get another plantation down on the olives as well. You know what? We might as well do that. They should be set for a long time now. Right, we have another government thing to do. Um, we're going to generate wealth from them, maybe. I think instead we'll wait for the get the reformed one and then we'll spend on some of these. Right, we should take this over this turn. There we go. So we have another vassal. This time they have six population up here. So we've got to try and defend all this. Maybe after that, we can maybe convince the US for maybe a piece. Because we're a lot more powerful than them. We just don't have the units to break down like a big city. But maybe after we do unlock professional armies, we can try again. Right? 
The United States and Germany are now at war. Okay, so Germany are probably taking Seattle. As probably was... And they're rejecting that. I mean, I think Germany's going to take that over, no problem. So I'm surprised they rejected that. But, I mean, sure. <laughs> Nice, and we have an unlock for the Khans. I think I would rather spawn three horse archers, please. Look at that. Beautiful. And let's have a look at their stats. So, 19 attack, 28 defense, 50 health. Nice. And we'll probably get these over here to try and take over these barbarians for now. I wonder how long Seattle's going to hold out against Germany. If Germany come for us, then we're in big trouble. There you go. Our first attack with our horse archers. <laughs> they just locked Germany died. That's how scary they are, okay? We can expand towns. We're going to expand Telford as well. Get a little bit more bonuses going over there. Oh, and there we go. Uh, Seattle has taken that. So I believe uh, America are eliminated. Problem is Germany is very powerful. Uh, are we more powerful than the Aztecs? Yeah, so we could take the Aztecs. I don't know if there's more people here. Like I said, this was a completely random start. Random everything. So all of this is unexplored. So there could be like other civilizations. You know what I might do? On research, I might actually go down and pick up shipbuilding and maybe we can explore some of the seas a bit <laughs> to, to actually know what's going on. I would like to make friends with Germany for now, but it's not looking likely. Oh, we didn't even, we didn't even have neutrality with them. So they are free to just attack our units. That is terrifying. We are not ready for a war. Like we're building up now. You know, we've got so many vassals. We just need a bit of time. Once all these vassals build up, we're going to be expanding and like improving so fast. But... Are we going to get there? I mean, who knows? Please, Germany, please, I beg. I don't want to do this. Yeah, this vassal is up to... Oh, so the population is up to 10 now. Maybe that's because I was, like, a kingdom instead? I don't know. But before it was 5, now it's 10 population. So we're getting 8 income, 1.5 knowledge, 1.5 culture, and 1.5 improvement points. Very nice. And all our needs are met in our capital, which is nice. And in Belfast... They could do with some housing, so we could maybe get a lodge down. I don't want to waste a green tile, but maybe we'll have to. We do need them to expand now. Maybe our shipbuilding is done. So we get load transport, spawn utility ship, and a galley. Construction would give us other stuff, but I just want to explore a little bit, so I'm not too bothered about the rest. And we'll go and finish machines now. Nice. And look at them city growths and the boulders. Rival to the throne. So, uh, I don't want to fight. I'll just pay. I, I don't want to deal with it, to be honest. There we go. And we can get a reformed government now, or a kingdom. So, once it's available, we can do a revolution, which is nice. Just so at least we have it, right? Well, we can claim territory. I'm going to see if we maybe claim that. No, can we just get a road, please? Like, I would really appreciate a road right now. <laughs> Could create a town for Bristol, or who would that create it for? I don't know who that would be for, to be honest. Could create a town. We could give Belfast another one, which is probably the smarter choice. Then they'll expand a bit more there and there as well. So they get more tiles for building. And there we go. Just like that, they did expand and take them both. And we've got war horses. So a ranch and a pasture give warfare XP. You know what? I'll take that. We have some pastures down. And warfare XP will allow us to unlock all these quicker. And we are making really good money. 57 per turn is great. And we have finished machines. So we can now build workshops and log logging camps. Logging camps are great. Watch this. So if we go to our current, what are they called? Foresters. Rather than now doing two production, uh, they do four production and then two from the wood. So big increase there. And we do have the new building, which is... The workshop, which takes our work camp from two production to eight. So we'll finish this encampment next turn and then do the workshop here. And the same in Belfast as well. So production's going to have a massive increase here. And next for research, I think we could go feudalism and increase the max town level. A ranch. Large plantation is great for food. Kitchens are really good as well. They give you luxuries, which you need at 16 population. Or professional armies. Hmm. Universities would be a good shout as well for that knowledge. You know what? Feudalism. I'm going to go with that. I, th I think that may be the right choice. Uh, we'll see. Okay, nice. So in this new era, we've like got tea and stuff. And as you can see, we do have some tea there, which can give diplomacy and wealth. Could be useful, but it's not super close. So it may not end up getting used, to be honest. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, 
We're the second most part. Is it other nations that we just don't know about? I mean, it could be. I might build a dock. Uh, we'll build it here. And that we got that spawned boat now. So we can start moving them around and maybe see if there's anything else. But I, I don't know if there is, to be honest. <laughs> and we've built the encampment. We can get that workshop down as well for all those nice production bonuses. We'll get it in both of our cities so they can start building stuff way quicker. We could integrate Bursa. I mean, it's got 10 population. Like, that might not be bad. It's way big. Well, Belfast got eight. Our capital only has 13. It might not be a bad integration, although it would cost us some culture. But it's quite built up. We could get, oh, it's giving us 15 gold. I mean, how much is our capital making? 26. So we could make it better. Like, we really could. Oh, nice. Belfast just expanded and got some tea. So we could make a plantation over here. I believe it's a plantation you want. And then Belfast will now start producing some tea, giving us some diplomacy and wealth. We've got another culture thing. There's no outpost to absorb. I mean, it could be worth getting a pioneer. We could ex Can we... I've never tried doing... Absorbing two things in one place. I might try get a pioneer down, say, here. And absorb some of this tea and stuff. We'll see how it goes. We could use Eureka and get closer to getting feudalism. Or we could do cutting edge. Can we create towns anywhere? Could give Bursa a town, another town. Uh, Bristol. Uh, you know what? We're going to use a Eureka. And then we're now one turn away from feudalism. And look at that. We just got feudalism. And all these farms we built can now be improved. So if we go through and improve all this while we can, they'll now start producing three food. Or they get two wheat. And that's three food each, I believe. So we'll start getting way more wheat now. And what we can do with all this wheat, do we have an oven so we have wheat and if we can we turn the wheat into flour do we not have stuff for it yet i'm not too sure we've got kitchens as well kitchens are really good they turn meat into food and luxuries um we could now go i think professional army yeah because we start needing an army now because um we are going to just start falling behind now, all of our places are almost on max prosperity i think it's just this city down here we should now have a merchant on to do that. And all our vassals are doing really well. And now for Khans, Unite Tribes can convert adjacent barbarian camps into horse archers. Mm, okay. You know what? Let's just make barbarians kind of friendly to us. They're neutral, so they're not going to attack us anymore. And then later on, we can start spawning camps near these people to cause problems for them. I'm going to do public improvements so we can start increasing all the food here. Now, Edinburgh should start in, like growing fast now, hopefully. There we go. We're going to make an outpost here. And as they border, hopefully on our next culture, we can absorb it. But I've never tried doing more than one, like, absorbing an outpost before in one city. So we'll see how it works. The Aztecs. Oh, we're now at war with Germany. Hmm. I'm going to try and stay out of it, to be honest. <laughs> but we now have the workshop built. We now have 35 production, which is decent. It's not amazing. Probably should get the lockout built. <laughs> And every time we get improvement points, we're just improving all of our buildings now, all our farms and stuff. So food shouldn't be a problem for a long time. And we can rush this. Can we absorb this outpost? Can I support another town? Okay, so yeah, it has two towns. So we can't do it for now. This outpost, it's not great then. Hmm. Guess we'll leave it there for now. There's no point in removing it, I guess. It does give now a proper link from our capital to everywhere else, I guess. And then maybe later we'll try and absorb it if we can. I guess as we can't absorb any more outposts, we could do another Eureka. 60 knowledge, which is like, what, five turns? And then we're one turn away now from professional army. Do you know what? That's pretty good. We take it. We take it. Now, next up, uh, we have nothing special. We need a, for Age of Conquest, we need 150% greater power score than anyone else. We don't. Age of Intolerance is to do with religion if you're not doing it well. Age of Discovery if we have five docks. I guess we could build five docks, but I'm not too bothered about going to a next age just yet. I'm going to focus on universities to get some knowledge. Bristol expanding, huge for us. Germany want to offer peace. Uh, yeah. How are they doing then? Power-wise? A lot more powerful than me still. But I think pretty soon we are going to now start focusing on building units. We're making 76 gold a month, so we can support a, quite a big army. But for now, I'm just focused on building up, to be honest. And it looks like Greece. Oh, so there is more people then. So is there like a whole other island over here or something? Because Greece is now 
going forward. And we haven't seen Greece. So there must be other people we still haven't met. <laughs> there we go. And we've got this now after another Eureka. So we now can build universities for knowledge. Dry compass. I haven't really used much of the ships before, to be honest. So I don't know. Is there a way to go in this deep water? There must be. So maybe one of these can. Maybe we should get it. A cog. Can that go in fish? Can that go in deep water? I don't know. Uh, it's risky to waste nine turns on it. But if it does allow us to get to deep water, we can maybe explore all this land over here. And another innovation. Uh, Pre-gunpowder units. So, like, basically all of our units at this point gain more attack versus militia. Mm, I'm going to take the gold because pretty soon we should get gunpowder and stuff. Like, next turn, hopefully. So, we might not need that. We can expand town over here. So, we could go ahead and expand this town over here. Which is now level 3. Gain us more food and wealth. We take it. I need more sanitation in our capital. So, I guess we are going to go ahead and build a midden. Just like that. So, they can meet that need. And we need somebody working it. So, what do we want to sacrifice? Maybe one person working the grassland works over here. And now everything's met. So, they should expand. Now, when we get to 16 population in one turn, they're going to start wanting some luxuries. And we are producing two meat. So, what we can do is, once we have 32 improvement points, we could make a kitchen. Also, they can use olives as well, which we have two of. And that will produce us some luxuries. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to integrate this city over here. Uh, right now, it's shrinking because um, it doesn't have all its needs met. So, what we can do... Is it has farms. We could turn them to plowed farms. Like that. They're now meeting their need for food. But they don't have it for housing. But it's no longer shrinking. So we can get some housing down. Uh, next turn we can get a lodge down. And they may start trying to revolt at some point. No, it's fine for now. But at some point we're going to want some city guards on it. We're going to get the workshop built over here, I think. Get its production up and turn this into a nice big city for us. Well, they were, they were great as a vassal, but they'll be even better as an actual city, to be honest. Better than Belfast, you know? So yeah, we're going to give them a lodge. We'll, we'll just chuck it up over here. And now they all need a met, so they'll keep growing. And we can start actually using them for some nice bit of production. And Germany just declared hostilities. Great. I guess we'll just keep using Eureka. It is less powerful each time you use it in a single era. Well, then again, it's one turn till that's unlocked. So maybe instead... We'll spawn a pike and a crossbowman over here. And then take over these barbarians because they've just been harassing this poor town. There we go. Nice. I was going to need some sanitation soon, to be honest. So we probably are going to want to give them that so they grow faster. We need 32 improvement points for that, though. Very expensive. And there we go. Somebody, which I think was Greece. Greece seemed to be very far ahead, taking us to all the eras. They have taken us to the age of renaissance. So the first artist unit created in this age provides a culture bonus. The social fabric system is unlocked. Every nation receives a social fabric wildcard. Scouts can now upgrade to explorers and undertake expeditions. And new governments are unlocked. But we're still not there yet anyway. What we can do, we can improve our fisheries and we can now make cogs. We'll start going towards the age of resistance now then. Or the age of renaissance, not resistance. And for our Khan, uh, spawn a barbarian. I don't want that. The Khan can convert an adjacent barbarian camp. Um, we'll just increase them, I think, for now. Increase their damage and stuff. And we can start upgrading all these fisheries. That will be useful. Although I probably should have built the sanitation thing. I did forget. But that's okay. What I want to do in our capital, I want to build a cog quickly first. I want to see if they can go deep water or not. Yeah, there's France and everything in this game. I just haven't seen them. There we go. And we can give them the midden now. So we'll chuck it up here as well. Right next to the houses, of course. And um, they should start growing now. All maxed out. Almost, anyway. But Khan is no more. May their legacy never fade. Wait, what? Did the Khan just die? So we have our cog and... No, it can't. Okay, so the cog is kind of useless to us. Great, that's that's amazing. <laughs> so that was a waste of a couple turns. And what I'm going to do in my capital is if we have a look, now they have over 16 population. They need luxuries. Now, luxuries will never go below 100%, but the more you increase it, the faster your population can grow. So we have these kitchens, which can convert either meat, olives, sugar to delicacies, which is 10 food and four luxuries. So we put a kitchen down right by there. 
These guys now have loads of luxuries. They're all very happy, and that is sorted out for us. So they should start growing again. Can claim some territory. Um, what do we want to claim? Could also rush our culture. Can we absorb outpost yet? No. Um, create town, maybe, for, like, some of our vassals or something. Maybe, like, Bristol. Or oh, these guys can have another town over here. So we could create a town over here for these. There's not many great tiles, though. Maybe over here for the cattle and stuff. Or, you know, we'll just grow them that way. Why not? And that's an extra road as well. And also, now Belfast has this marble. What we can do is we can set a quarry on top of it and then build a stone cutter next turn for a loads of extra production in Belfast, which will be nice. Yeah, there's some more stuff up here, but it doesn't seem like anything useful. I don't know how to get to deep water. Hopefully, we'll work it out soon. <laughs> it seems like this map is like two islands, maybe, with everybody else on the other island. And there we go. We can get the stone cutter down. So right now, it has 28 production. And then with the stone cutter going down, now up to 31. So that's a nice bit of increase there. There we go. And we have now entered the new age. So what we can do is once we finish our next culture, we can do a revolution to change from a kingdom. Which, yeah, I'll probably do that. And um, we have new things to unlock. So printing press, public works, administration, navigate. Oh, navigation. Capable of traversing deep ocean. There we go. You know what? I'm going straight into it. Gunpowder would be nice. But I just need, I need to know what's going on on that side of the world. So we're just going to do that. Tolerance. What does this do? Social fabric stuff. You know what? We're going to do that. And let's have a look at the social fabric. So we have one point to spend right now. If we max out our government points as well, we can also use that to get social fabric points. Well, any of them. But it's organization, which makes expansion cheaper. Insight, which research. You can see the logo. You know what they are. But I think we might want to go for... I think we're going to go for warfare. We need to actually... That will make our units cheaper. We have a lot of money, so pretty soon we need to start building them up. But I keep getting caught up on building everything else. <laughs> Here we go, we can rush our culture finishing now. Peaceful revolution. I say we do that. So we have an empire, a feudal monarchy, or a republic. So the empire is about naval dominance. Then we have the feudal monarchy. Greatly improves all aspects of its loyal vassals. Or a republic. Build fewer but more populous and powerful regions. Now, we're all about them vassals today. So we are going to get a feudal monarchy. So... We now just unlocked the throne room to be built. Increases domain XP maximum to 300 and improvement point maximum to 300. And as you can see, we can increase the vassal's prosperity, um, allow them to build improvements two times faster, or they grow their population faster and wealth and stuff. So we're going to pick up the bottom two and maybe we do spawn more settlers. Like our vassals now can grow even more and they should start growing a little bit faster as well and building things twice as fast. So yeah, I think feudal monarchy was best for us. There we go. And we just unlocked navigation. I'm now going to go into... Uh, what do we want to go into? I'm not too sure. Gunpowder. And once we have gunpowder, we're going to build up our army. And then we're going to go for Germany. So as soon as gunpowder is done, we can get some good units. And we're going to use all our money for them. And there we go. We can get this one now to increase the population of all its vassals. So yeah, feudal monarchy is going to make our vassals even more powerful, which is the main thing of like all our income and stuff right now. So that's really, really useful for us. But as soon, soon as we get gunpowder now, after this ship's built and stuff, we're going to explore that side and then we're going to start. I think we go for Germany. If we can take over Germany, we can like control this whole side of the map. Oh, and look at this innovation. This is how good they can be. 10% vassal border expansion per turn and 2.5% vassal population growth per turn. Like, that's probably the best thing we could have just gotten. And we're going to do Oath of Fealty. What's this? Increasing population. So we can use that. And our population will increase in our vassals. That's probably worth it, to be honest. There we go. And we have a unit now that can explore the deep water. So let's hope we can actually get over here and not get destroyed. That would be nice. We're not generating any art XP, though. So I might get a grand theater in my capital. So we, maybe we can use some of that stuff. And then by the time that's built, we'll have gunpowder. And we can start getting some good units built. And we're going to build more logging camps as well in our capital. Make sure they're all actually being worked as well. Yeah, look at that. That's generating us a lot now. And from logging camps, do we have... Is it the sawmill? When do we get that? Have I missed it somewhere? I don't know. I believe it's called the sawmill. Unless I'm... Once we get that anyway, we can turn all this production into a lot more. So that's what I'm wondering about. Oh, there's someone here. 
And that looks like a big city, so I don't know who that is. But that might be Greece, because Greece has been so powerful. But we did just unlock gunpowder. And next, we're going to get finance. There's a nice bit of productions in here with warehouses and stuff. Oh, that's France. So we just met France here. And we just met Greece. So they're right up here. So they're right next to each other. And we've met Egypt. So yeah, they're all just hiding over here. I use cultural power. I think this time I'm going to do a Eureka. And we've just finished finance just like that. And exploration, I'm just going to use it to get a social fabric point right here in insight. So that is giving us... Makes researching cheaper. So you know what? That's quite good. Machinery could be nice. Brickworks, clay mines, clear cut, sawmill, sawmill. Yeah, I want a sawmill. That's going to be big for production. Right. I think now, though, in our capital, I think we start now building an army. So we have these guys who can use guns. So let's just start pumping out a couple of those and we prepare for war with Germany. And France has already declared hostilities on us. Uh, we just met them. And they are how powerful? Pretty much the same power as us. And we're about to build all our units. So we should be way more powerful in France pretty soon. And we've met Brazil. So yeah, taking over Germany, we'll have like half the map to ourselves. I'm going to get Edinburgh as well. We could start making some cannons. Devastating. I'm just going to focus on getting some gun units down for now. Germany's just declared war. That, that's such bad timing. We're only now building up our power and they've already declared war. Are we still allied with the Aztecs? Yes, we are. I mean, they, they will join with us then. But I could have done with a tiny bit more time. Because uh, we do not have the army really right now, to be honest. So if they just start running all the units down here, we're going to be in loads of trouble. <laughs> there we go. And we just finished machinery. So we can start going to the Age of Enlightenment. I mean, might as well. We're not going to be first. Germany's first. So we won't be far behind them at least. Now we have 200 improvement points. What I want to see is we are making forward and we currently have 46 production over here. And if we look at the sawmill, they turn four logs to four lumber. So now we're up to 54 production. So using all our logs for that. But way more production so we can start making these units a lot faster as well. And we can build two more logging camps, which should give us four wood again. Two wood. Hmm. So we can't get a sawmill just yet. But pretty soon we should be able to. Right, they are attacking one of our cities up here. I don't know if we're going to be able to defend it. We have a couple of units on it, like some pikemen and stuff. But uh, do we send... We could send more units up there. But um, I don't... I don't we're just not ready for this fight right now. We're only now building our units, which, yeah, we should have built them a bit earlier. But I was just focusing on all our production and stuff like that, which worked out okay, but could cost us now. We have these horse archers as well. We'll probably start moving them up there as well. I want to keep some units around my other cities just in case. Germany want to offer peace. You know what? I'm going to take it this time. And now we're building up our army. We're just going to build up the biggest army we can, and then we're going to go and fight them. Oh, and somebody has taken us to a new age, it seems. Germany, we are going to the Age of Enlightenment. So completing your first public library building provides bonus specialists. Uh, secularism grows, preventing the foundation of new religion. From now on, four technologies need to be researched to advance to the next age and new national spirits unlocked. So yeah, uh, we, we haven't really done much religion today. I think one day... Maybe my next video on this game, so I'm definitely going to do more. We'll start messing around with religion, but I think for today, we'll just kind of hold off on it. And we might use... We could spawn two horse archers. Yeah, I'm going to spawn two horse archers. Just try and build up the biggest army we can for now. There we go. And we have now entered this age ourselves. Egypt on open borders. We may as well take it. Germany are threatening us. What's new? So now one of our regions has a population of 31. We need education. So, let's have a look. We also now can unlock a new national spirit. Now, we was on Khans. What do we want to go for? I think warfare still. So, commanders. Commanders, marshal, capable and trained soldiers. Keeping the armies alive so they can grow to higher veterancy. Becoming more dangerous on the battlefield. And then we have mercenaries. Can be built around earning wealth and spending it to deploy powerful units. Ooh. We have a lot of wealth. Let's have a look. So, commanders... Leaders go better for tactics, unlocks another unit, which is quite powerful, and cavalry. So we have grenadiers, that could be huge. Hmm. Or mercenaries. 
Spawns a mercenary. Mercenaries, they're powerful. Disband a friendly army, gain extra wealth. On enemy unit killed, 25 wealth. So we get money from just fighting. And then we can call more mercenaries, it seems. Um, you know what? Let's try it. We'll try mercenaries. We'll see how it goes. Could be fun. And now we're here. I think we go for standing armies. So we unlock the grenadiers and another cavalry unit. And increases the army size again, which is going to be so helpful. If we can get that before Germany, we should have a massive advantage in every single battle. So let's check. We have muskets. Are they much better than them? Yeah, they're a fair bit better. Men of Man of war for... And recon balloon engineer. Okay, I think we start making some muskets then. Here we go. And we just unlocked standing army. So now we can create grenadiers, another horse unit, and even bigger army sizes. Now next, I don't know what we should really go for. I might actually go back a little bit. And I might get public works for like bigger bonuses to sanitation and housing. I think that would be a smart play. We don't need to stay in the same era. We can just go back and unlock some other things as well. It's always good to do. But yeah, right now, we're still just upgrading and getting as many units as we can. Look, we're boarding them all up by Seattle. And, oh, they've just declared war. I'm still slightly not ready because um, I did want to go ahead and get some maybe cannons built. They're quite quick to build, though, so it might not be too bad. I guess we'll just send up everything we have. Don't have any cannons or anything, though, which I think they would be useful. But you know what? They've started a war, so let's just get in there. Uh, we're going to try and destroy this uh, town over here. And I have muskets. So I can't imagine horse archers being great. No. Um, that's most of what we have up here. So I think this might go terribly, to be honest. A couple more turns, but I mean, that's how it always is, isn't it? Just a couple more turns. But we have got some good units being built and ready to come up as well. So I, I think we'll be okay. Of course, there's still so much for me to learn on this game as well. And I'm definitely going to do more videos on it. So I'm still learning quite a lot. So we can get these horse units as well, but they're going to be really slow to build. Maybe some cannons to send up there would be nice. So they are attacking my city, but here I'm just going to hold... Oh my god, look at all that. They're all coming from here. Hmm. Maybe we lose that, but if we take Seattle... Oh, that's got 20 population though. Right, we're going to end our turn, see what they do. If I lose, I lose. You know what? That's fine. In our next video, we'll do even better and hopefully we'll win. Oh my god. They have some serious units that we do not have. Uh, they just wiped out one of my armies. I think this is it. Um, sea dogs. We can take the gold. Hmm. Mercenaries. So we can do this now. So we can spawn a mercenary. Where is that? Hire mercenaries. We can spawn them kind of wherever it seems. So maybe if we chuck them... Let's see. How does this battle go? Do we defend? Yeah, we definitely defend that. Um, I think... Uh, how many units do we have in there? So they can get two more. How many units do mercenaries... Just one, I think. So now they have these mercenaries there as well. So that's useful. And uh, I think this turn, we got to try and take this out. Yeah, that was way better. One more attack and that is gone. So that's going to weaken Seattle. There we go. And they do have this little army here. They took out all my horse archers. So uh, that's fun. But we can go up here and attack them with this unit. And wipe them out. But can we take Seattle? I mean, we got to try, right? Or do we... I, oh my god. I think we're losing this town. They have all these siege equipment and stuff that we don't even have. So I can't see that going too well for us. We do have a cannon now though. We're going to get the cannon to join these two musketeers. And we're going to send these up as well. Hire more mercenaries. Just try and buff up our defense here. Upgrade all the units we can. And let's just hope they can hold that. Like two mercenaries, a musketeer, a leader, and a raider band. Now at this point, raider bands are kind of terrible. So that's not great. But... You know what? At least they're there. And I guess next turn, maybe we try and go for Seattle. Now, our allies are in the war. So hopefully the Aztecs start attacking them from the north. And maybe they'll take some pressure off us. But they're going to get this city, which is not great. Because that's probably making us a lot of money. But yeah, look how many battles they're doing for it. Still standing though. Let's see. Skip straight to the end. Yay, the walls held up quite nice there. And yeah, we've kind of just got to go for it. Oh, it might go terribly though. Yeah, it thinks we're going to lose. Uh, you know what? Got to try. We can take Seattle. That'd be big. But we need, we need cannons and stuff, I'd imagine, for these walls. And we have this unit here as well. We'll send them in for an attack. We should get enough warfare XP from this battle anyway to go ahead and reinforce. But now it thinks we're going to win. So maybe we can take it over. Yes, we did. Right, we took Seattle. That's really, really, really big for us now. Do we move 
for Berlin. Keep these units attacking and just hope these hold up here. Maybe I'm going to put some reinforcements down to heal anyway. And then, yeah, we're going to go for Berlin next. We've got another army here waiting to defend this one. And as long as hopefully these can hold for as long as possible. They've built like a lockout. Um, hopefully they have the keep and stuff. So that's kind of saving them for now. We have another army here as well. We're going to send them around, join up in Seattle, maybe try and defend Seattle a bit. This army will put in this town or maybe we'll get them up into this town. So we can hold off for as many turns as we can. If we can take like two or three of their cities while they're still trying to get this one, that'd be really big for us. But we do have a big army in it, so we might hold for quite some time. Let's see how the next battle went. Nice. They've done a couple of battles though, so that's the problem. The walls are gone. Oh no. And look how many battles they're doing per turn. We're winning them all, which is good because we're wiping out a lot of their armies. Yeah, look at that. We are just destroying their armies right now and hopefully upgrade some muskets there as well. So we're going to make sure they're upgraded. And I think these lot just start attacking Berlin and hope for the best. As long as they don't die, it's not too bad. So once their walls are gone, we will be in a way better position. Uh, we could also spawn mercenaries, add them to this army. And they'll be able to attack next turn. Greece won alliance. You know what? They want to offer peace. We're going to continue war. But yeah, look at that. They just killed four of our, like, good units. If we send them out there, we attack them before they're able to retreat back. We did lose one unit, but we killed both of them. Now we go in for an attack. And hopefully we're close to taking this over. They're all really injured. But there's one unit left holding it. So next turn, we can do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to hire mercenaries. There. And we're going to get them to go and join in there. It says my mercenary on his own will win. So maybe we just send him in. And maybe we take it this turn. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, a musket. We should... Yes. So we've taken Seattle and Berlin now. And we can actually put reinforcements now. It's my own territory. Do we go for Frankfurt next? We're still holding kind of strong over here. I mean, yeah, very strong. Like any army that tries attacking us, we are wiping them out. So yeah, maybe Frankfurt, PA or wherever city that's held to. Because that's just a town. I imagine this is going to be their main capital but here. Well, I don't really know. Is there a way to see their main capital? Don't know. But there's definitely something but here. So maybe we should start moving up and see what's up here. We could unlock colonies or government. A government, loads of influence. I'm going to get that so I can expand my towns even more. And we're going to want to find any merchants we have and send them over here as well. Start improving the prosperity over here because it's going to be quite low for now. We have a couple of merchants around not really doing anything. We can make some Grenadiers as well. We might as well start getting some of them built. We haven't built any of them yet. We only have two armies left, so we've got to be careful with attacking. Greece and Germany are now at war. Nice. Germany, it might be their time over. And look at that. They just retreated from our holding up here. And what is this? We have a Chaos event. Um, you know what? We'll take the education loss. I don't think it's important for us right now. But look at that. They are running away. Yeah, clone. Are we going to be able to attack that? It says we're going to draw. Yeah, maybe we can actually take Cologne with these two armies. We could do with some backup for them. we got this army coming through. I was going to hold them on Seattle, but I think I might send them over. And this army here can start attacking and taking out the ones that are lingering, I think. Just clear up this area, get them out of our land. And then once they're done with that, we'll send them through as well. Uh, what we can do is... Oh, we can't hire mercenaries. Um, we'll send this unit in them first to attack. That should give us a Warfare XP where we can spawn some more mercenaries for the second army. But if we can take this as well without too much of a loss. So higher mercenaries there. Mercenaries join these guys. And then these guys now go in for their own attack. They still have the walls though, although they are almost broken. There we go. We have now taken Cologne as well. So Germany now, um, they're about half of our power. So Germany are in trouble. Diplomacy, we're going to spawn a merchant up here. As this is now a vassal. And we can get this merchant. Just start increasing the prosperity as well. So these guys can start contributing to our wars. I mean we could move up now and go for Dortmund to be honest. So I'm going to get these units now to start heading up. Now Germany won peace. But um, I think we can still take more off them. I'm going to go for probably Dortmund. Take all. Look how much they have loads. So if we can take all of this we'll be so powerful. Guess Munich. Munich would be the best. But I don't know if we take that. Because it's probably quite heavily defended. Yeah, I don't want to move these units from here because, as you can see, they have 300-odd. I don't know if there's men in there or not, or if that's just their ship power. 
But I'm just going to hold an army there just in case to defend. You can see they still have a lot of powerful armies still about. So we have got to be careful. But if we can take Dortmund, I think we'll be in a really good spot. And as you can see, the Aztecs are also fighting them as well. So as long as we both stay at war with them, I think we can both take them out together, to be honest. Ah, uh, they've just put a good chunk of units on Dortmund. Could go and fight those. Oh, they have another 200 there. Yeah, I don't want to go in for a battle and then lose too many men. So what should the plan be? I mean, hmm. We could send this army. Instead of defending, they could go and attack. Although the army's not that good. Maybe we'll just take... Nah, we'll probably just leave them be. You know what? I'm just going to take the risk. This army's too good to just be sat here. I'm going to send them up. Put some pressure on them. And then maybe next turn we'll actually be able to go in for a proper fight. But uh, we'll, we'll just hold until then with the rest of our units. For some reason, they moved awkwardly. I clicked to move here, and rather than just going, like, from here, they went, like, around, and now they're, like, stuck there. So we might have to try and go in for some fights, but it doesn't look like we can win any of these. But, you know what? We've got to try and go for it. We need to try and weaken them. The longer we leave it, they're just going to build up more and more men. And their, their big capitals, where they're going to be building them, are going to be much closer than ours. Oh, yeah, that was huge. Took out an entire army there. You know what, Lair, maybe we do to start trying to take over them now. We have another 205 unit strength here. They're not very good, so I think defense is probably a smart play for them. There's some units down here. That's just like a scout, though. That's okay. We are building more. We have a decent amount of units over here, but I'm okay with leaving them there for now. We are just trying to build more and more down here. We have a first grenadier, so they can join our unit up here. Once we get another full stack, we'll be sending them up. And, of course, we can spawn mercenaries. Um... I don't know if they would be useful anywhere right now, though. Like, all of these are full. So, could spawn them there. And then send these out for an attack. Yeah, you know what? Let's support the rest of our armies with them. And then we'll send these ones up here to defend this city instead. Aztecs, though, they got some powerful armies. They're putting a lot of pressure onto it. I think Germany's over here. They want peace. We're going to keep continuing war. France want to restore neutrality. We'll do that. And let's see if we can take this army out. Let's go. We'll skip to the end. Almost fully wiped them out. Um, we could go and finish them off. Or we could maybe try and take this army on. Yeah, we're going to do that. Just weaken them as much as we can. And that army got fully wiped out. And then with this one, we'll go and finish these off. We might as well. So we've taken out all of the armies here now. So next turn, we can start a big siege. Do we have cannons? So they did attack us up here. And they did quite a lot of damage, it seems. Yeah, luckily no one died, so we can chuck some reinforcements, heal them, and they go in to attack them back, and they haven't healed, so we can wipe them out. And now I think it is time we start trying to attack. Now, it doesn't think we're going to win any of them, so we're going to take some damage. That's okay. Just weaken the walls. I don't even have walls. Okay. This might actually be quite easy. Yeah, and we'll send this unit in to attack as well, and I think this may be over. Yeah. So we have now also taken Dortmund. And what we're going to do, once we have a little bit more diplomacy, well, one more, we can actually form a merchant there as well. So we have a lot of new vassals. So Oath of Fealty increase all their population. Now making almost 300 gold. <laughs> we can't make units fast enough. I could integrate this place. But let's focus on the war first. And then maybe look at integrating. Um, we still have a lot of cities though. We're going to get this unit to hopefully take over this little settlement they have down near the outpost. I still have that army just wandering there, which is a bit worrying. You know what? We'll probably hit them all with reinforcement. And then we'll go for Essen as well. Maybe we'll just try and leave Munich for last. Because it might be quite tough. Hopefully this turn we destroy that outpost. Yeah, there we go. That outpost is gone. It could be worth going for this one next. We could spawn mercenaries on this army and bring some backup from Berlin to take this outpost out. And then maybe move on, take that one out as well. And then all their pressure from behind is gone. We just have to focus on them above us. But um, I think we go for Essen, to be honest with you. Jump straight in there. We're on a roll, so let's just carry it on. And there we go. We got that as well, just like that. And we can now also spawn a merchant. So we're going to do it on Dortmund. Start increasing their prosperity. And, I mean, yeah, I guess we just keep moving through. Maybe take Hamburg and take these two. And then left, maybe Munich. Oh, it looks like there's more pinks. They might even have even more land than we can see. All right, let's see if we can get Hamburg as well. May as well just keep going now. Yep, there we go. That's another one for us. Um, This one might be a little bit harder. 
Thinks we're just going to win, though. So let's just get straight in there. Yeah, I think Germany's done. Uh, they're not having a good time. So they have one more city up here. If the Aztecs get it, I'd be happy, to be honest. Oh, they have even more towns. Yeah, they're going to have more across this water over here, I think, which we haven't explored yet. But they can't be much. Uh, maybe like one or two more. But we'll see. They're almost out. They want peace. Of course you do. That's not happening, though. <laughs> Right, see if we can take another one. Yeah, we are able to just walk through all of these smaller ones. So we can take over all these settlements. And then we're just left with the big stuff. There's an army of 200 right there. Although we can go in and attack this. So I'm just going to do it. I have walls. But yeah, even in one turn, our army is too good for that right now. So we have an outpost up here. But I might just forget about the outpost and move on. Take this place and then go for Munich. I think they should be pretty much done at that point, to be honest. There we go. And we just unlocked government as well. Some nice buildings for loads of influence. Society, public, co you know, um, colonies. Colony improvement. You know what? We're going to go with colony. See what that's like. Nice. And we got enough war. Score to get another bonus for our mercenaries. So disband friendly or gain wealth for enemies killed. Yeah, because you have 14,000 cold. <laughs> They have another city over here now next to Dortmund. Or did I lose that? Um, I, I, there's so much going on. I'm not even sure. But it looks like the Aztecs are there sieging it. So I, I think it's good. Honestly, it's so much going on. I, there we go. We took over that. No problem. So it is now time. I mean, to take what I assume is their actual capital. And we're going to go up and destroy this army as well. That's lingering about. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> send them back i think next turn we'll be able to start our attack although i'm a bit worried how powerful is it gonna be i don't know could be so powerful it does have 20 population so it's quite a big place but we've got this army here and we're gonna try and take over this outpost as well because they're kind of close we do have a lot of bad units though so uh that did kind of backfire but we can hire mercenaries or no we can't because we're in enemy territory. So, uh, I think we'll win that eventually. I'm also having so many improvement points, I literally can't spend them. Like, I, I have too many. And there's not really much else for me to build right now. So, I'm just having tons of them. I'm going to spawn some mercenaries over here. Take some of these raiders out. Add mercenaries and see if that flips it a bit. Not really. Uh, we could reinforce them for their health and see how that goes. Hopefully it gives us a better chance of defeating them because they've got quite a nice army down here and all our best armies are away. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not too bad. But either way, I think it's time we do now start taking over their capital. So we're, we're, we're going to lose some men. I mean, that's a guarantee. We're fighting a big city here, but hopefully not too many. Raiders will just die. But as long as no one but the raiders die, it's not too bad. Hopefully they get rid of their walls. Yeah, there we go. And one more battle. So, you know what? You guys go in. You're my smallest army, but it's literally just walls. So, if you lose that, I'd be quite shocked. Regional capital conquered. Are Germany still in the game? Where? Where? Where, where is Germany? Like, actually, where is Germany? I, I, what? How, I swear that's it. Or have I got to get rid of the outposts as well? Like, maybe I've got to get rid of the outposts? I don't, I don't really know. I guess... But they can't really do much with the outposts. Oh, they have this, don't they? Oh, they have that. Okay, so we'll just send our units up to fight that then, I guess. And then maybe once that's gone, they're gone. Because I can't imagine they'd stay in the game if they just have outposts left. It wouldn't really make too much sense. Because what, what are they going to do? But we'll see. Maybe the Aztecs will take it over. Because it does seem like they have one city over here. We also have so much gold. The chaos events just don't matter. Because we just pay them off. <laughs> like This is the most gold I've ever had. It's going really well, which I'm very happy about. I didn't think it'd go this well. Oh, they've taken it over. So I don't... Is it just outposts then? If we wipe out their outposts, are they over? Because I can't really understand why they're still in the game right now. And four outposts. They have one up here. And there was another one down here. There's two there and one there as well. So I think that's it then. Unless this is a city, not an outpost. I don't really know. Struggling to tell, to be honest. Right, we've got a better army here now. Hopefully these guys can win this. There we go. So that army's pretty much gone. We can clear them up with this army as well. And then we can take over this outpost next turn. 
and then see if this is a city. The border is slightly different, so I imagine there is a city here under this cloud that we just can't see, and that must be their final city. If not, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea. Now, we can get even more stuff now, so we can call ambushes. Mercenary training for outposts. We'll call ambushes. We'll get that. That sounds quite cool. I want to see, are we the most powerful? Our power is now 4,200. Like, if we compare it to Greece... Yeah, we're more powerful than Greece, Egypt, way more powerful than Egypt. Germany is not even a question. Aztecs, double their power. The United States has already been wiped out. Brazil is much weaker and France is much weaker. So currently, as it stands right now, we are the most powerful nation in the entire world. And most of it has been built thanks to vassals. Vassals can be absolutely amazing. And we just unlocked colonies as well. And next, I think we're going to go with... Public library sounds quite good for the knowledge. So I think we'll pick that up because we're falling behind a little bit now in terms of knowledge, which I don't like. Right, so we're going to get a weaker army now to destroy this outpost. Hopefully, please take it out. Ugh, really? Okay, we're going to have to take it out with this army then. So that's that outpost destroyed. And then we just need them to get over there and finish the job. And it looks like Greece is taking us to the next age once again. They're just so far ahead of us in terms of like knowledge of the age of revolution. Revolutionaries will appear to free your regions and form new nations, generate power to prevent brownout and blackout from modern buildings and improvements, assemble an air force to defend your regions. Oh god, now we have revolutions to deal with. <laughs> it's the last thing I needed, guys, come on. Wait, the Aztecs just cancelled our alliance. Like, are you stupid? Right, we can attack now, though. And we should have no problem wiping these out. Germany, player seven has been eliminated. Nice. So finally, we did take out Germany. It wasn't the outpost. It was instead just the fact they had a hidden city that somehow we didn't see, just tucked away here, doing its own thing. And as you can see right now, uh, we have 18 vassals and just three regions of our own. And because we have so little regions, um, we are getting a lot of culture. But at this point, it could be worth actually integrating some more vassals into actual cities, to be honest, because... They'll be a lot more useful. And we're making so much gold. I mean, yeah, I think that is a good place to leave this part. I wasn't planning on doing two parts, but um, this game is very long and it's going to be a super long video as it is. So if you do want to see a part two, leave a like, let me know in the comments. But if not, and definitely either way, whether this gets a part two or not, I'm going to be doing more videos on this game because uh, it is a lot of fun. And remember, this is sponsored though, so... If you do want to pick it up for yourself, do check out the link in the description. But I want to know what your thoughts are on the game. Like, does it look interesting? Do you play it when it was on Steam Fest? Do you think it was good? I'm not trying to give like a review here, but I don't often massively get into like these 4X Civ type games. But I I've been playing this a fair amount. So do definitely expect more videos on this game, even though it might not be a part two. We'll just see. Let me know. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.